Good evening, brothers and sisters. Tonight we're doing a very special episode of The Branches of Yahusha. I have managed to coax my husband, Mark Davidson, into doing an interview and sharing his testimony and story with everyone. Everyone has seen him out there interviewing people, talking to everyone, but I'm not sure how much you all know about him, and I'm sure that everyone can be encouraged and inspired from hearing his story and what he has to say, and there's not many opportunities he gets to actually say much. So tonight we're going to hear from Mark. I'm going to now pass it over to him to start talking to us about a few things. How are you, darling? Good, darling. I don't think this is a good idea, brothers and sisters. I don't <laughs> like think I, I have... said, I coaxed him into it. Oh, I have nothing to say that you will want to know. Trust me. We all want to hear your story. How did you first find out about Yahusha? About, about the name and about um, the Nazarim and that sort of thing. What was your first? Um, thing that brought you into this experience? Um, I, I remember, and you've heard Chris say bits and pieces of this, it, it, I remember an Indonesian man giving a copy of Fossilised Customs and the Scriptures, ISR, to Chris Victoria oh, about eight or nine years ago. And uh, we were sort of in the circus at that point, and I was a worship leader, and we were doing all the stuff that you do, and rehearsals and you know we were doing it and we were very full on in our walk and uh one night Chris said to us uh come into the kitchen we're going to sit around and this wasn't like a teaching thing this was a I want us there's about four or five of us and he said I want us to go through this I don't know if we'd met at this point we really know no 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 this is before then because we it was like you weren't there no you weren't at this meeting well, we were probably sitting... still were married. <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting in the kitchen and uh, we are going through the forward of the scriptures and uh, looking at, at mm. how, how it explained LOI. You were there? I wasn't. I don't remember being there, but we were definitely married. Yeah. So we were looking at the forward of Thanks the scriptures. For remembering me. <laughs> <laughs> looking at the scriptures and uh, going through the forward. Because Chris was saying, look, I don't have the answers here. I, I want us to actually work this out for ourselves because... It had, it's like a, a bomb had gone off amongst us. And so he's saying, I don't think it's the right name that we've been calling him. And, uh, of course, that was J-E-S-U-S and L-O-I-D, Lord, and Christ and all those. And um, so from that, we kind of started saying Yehoshua, Y-E-H-O-S-H-A. We started saying that. And so I started changing all the Christian songs we were doing and putting Yehoshua in there and Yehoshua, yeah. And uh, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh and uh, things like that. And so a few of the older folk were a bit taken back, like, you know, because they weren't in that meeting and they didn't really get it at first. And they were, why is that? Why are you doing that? And, uh, but, you know, I got this singing and I just changed because I loved all my Christian music and Hillsong and all that. I used to sing all that mad stuff, and but I just changed all the names. And uh, it's pretty hard to fit Yahoshua into a spot where it's supposed to say J-S-U-S. But uh, we, we managed, and uh, that was the first time we we came across the name. And then, not long after that, we must have gone into Yashua. It was, it was always Y A H. It wasn't like the other messianics that was Yeshua. It was Yashua. That's where we went, and that's when we first got immersed. Y A H. Yeah. S H U A. That's where we went then. Yashua. Um, and we got the, we all got that's where we got the video footage of all of us getting immersed in Chris and Victoria's spa. So that was and that was about six months to a year after we were married, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So um, and that would be eight years ago. And then when we came up north, we came up a little bit earlier. Up to we went up to Cairns a little bit earlier than everybody else. And then Jason Newley came up about six months later, and a few others, and we got. Uh, Immersed again because that's when the teaching came in. I think Lou was, had realised it was Yeshua, not Yeshua. No, Yahuwah. What do we call him now? Yahusha. Yahusha. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> Yahusha. That's when Yahusha came in. So we got, we went and uh, we probably didn't have to, but we went down to the river and got immersed again. Um, 
and that, and but that time it was a really much more violent effect. We started going through a lot of things inside ourselves. Uh, anyway, to answer your question, was it when or how? <laughs> when? Eight years ago. Eight when years ago. and how. <laughs> when and how, yeah. I think it was That how. was the first time I experienced that. Um, yeah. I was very, you know, I was very young. I was 20, when I got married, I was 26. So I was only around 26 and I was just totally out myself. Um, a worship leader and thought everyone loved me and if they didn't, they should. Uh, so, um I had a very close relationship with Chris and Victoria, so the fact that they were being called in that direction, I just naturally went along with it to start with. Um, and it was about the love, so that's why love is a big big thing in my walk. I'm like a love junkie. I can't keep it all the time, and I don't show it all the time, but I, uh, if someone's got it, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to what you've got to say because um, I can see you, you love me. Um, but um, And you've put up with me. So... Uh, yeah, at that point, we um, I was flying in that direction with them, and uh, yeah. And how have things changed for you coming from? How did you? How were you raised? We you, you want to tell everyone how you were raised. I was raised uh, a Christian. Uh, my parents, to start with, my dad wasn't a Christian for most of my. Well, until I was about a teenager, he wasn't even really a Christian. Uh, we went to a. Circus of England, and then it went Anglican, and uh, most of my childhood was I was an Anglican, uh, in the band and that sort of thing. And then when I got to year twelve and was finishing school, all my friends went to this really funky, I thought so at the time, uh, Circus of Christ in Pendle Hill, and uh, they had a great band and they had real musicians. Uh, it's the first time I'd found really good musicians. I thought, oh, that's it. If I'm going to make it as a rock star in the circus, I'm going to have to go there. So I started climbing the ladder there and uh, and just doing gigs and outreach things and, you know, all those youth things where you jump off the stage and all that crazy stuff they do and, you know, had a ball. And uh, it was totally nuts. This was while I was working in the salon and I was the opposite in the salon. I was just a total introvert, wouldn't talk to people, just miserable, angry, upset. But when I went to circus, ah, oh, it just came alive, you know. So, yeah, so I was a Christian. And then uh, I was there for a couple of years, and then I was working in the salon with Chris and Victoria, and he said to me once, uh, have you been spirit-filled? I said, yeah, I'm Christian. He said, you've been spirit-filled? I said, yeah, I'm Christian. He said, no, have you been spirit-filled? <laughs> then it started all the years of arguing, and uh, I think... We argued and chatted about the Holy Spirit for a year or two, and uh, and I didn't didn't want to go there. I thought it wasn't necessary. I spoke to all the people at the circus because we're Protestants, so there's no indwelling of the Spirit or anything like that. No manifestations of the Spirit, nothing like that. And uh, anyway, I started to notice that he had something that I didn't. He had this joy about him, um, and uh, he tells me now he was crazy and he was nuts and. Wicked and everything back then, but I still saw that he had something I didn't have. Um, and so eventually I started making packs with G.O.D. and things started to go wrong. Okay, well, if you help me out of this, if you help me out of that, I'll go and get immersed. I'll go and get baptised in the Holy Spirit. And uh, and a few things went wrong and he helped me. And so, okay, got to do it now. So went and got immersed uh, at the circus I was at. But... Uh, they were saying Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I said no, it's LJC, and uh, so and Chris came along and Matthew came along too, and he, they, he was the only one that said Hallelujah <laughs> at the end of it. The whole circus was silent. He went Hallelujah, and uh, anyway, I went out in the backyard of their house one time, and I received the Holy Spirit, and I uh, started speaking in tongues, and and I went inside, and Victoria got me a scotch. It was great. <laughs> so, long story short, I was a Christian. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> um, so how did things change for you then when you came into this walk? Oh, well, I was a fake, totally fake. Um, when you came into this walk? 
before? Yeah, before. When I came into this walk, I was totally fake. Um, and I'm still chiseling off the, the religious stuff off me. Um, I, I was just um, really fake, really inward, really perverse, really uh, didn't want to talk to people. I lifted myself up above everybody. I didn't want to communicate with anybody. Uh, if I didn't like you, I would just sit there silent. And there would be this pressure uh, to make you think it was you that's got the problem, not me. Uh, fortunately, Christian Victoria learned very early along to just wake me out. And sometimes I had to wait weeks. I wouldn't talk because uh, I'm better than you. Uh, and you got the problem, not me. So just just wicked, crazy, immature, rubbish. You know? And uh, hmm. So to, to me, to answer your question, when... When I came in, he started just all this stuff inside me, really violent reactions. And because we came out of a, the Christian circus and we stayed together, we were about 10 of us stayed together, uh, we were all going through the same experience together, we were always looking at each other. And when you did that to me and you looked sideways at me and, you know, that wasn't, you know, always judging and bickering. And so we're always blaming each other, um, which is partly the reason I think you should split us all up. We've all gone our own way. Um, but stayed close together, most of us. And uh, so it's, to me, it was a violent reaction. He wanted to have a relationship with me and he didn't like the things I would look at, the things I would think, the things I would do, the things I would say. And so there'd just be this violent flogging inside me. And we had the teaching come, come into the assembly about the the uh, Hebrews 12 and the flogging. And um, he chastises us, he flogs us, he rebukes us and... There was one other one. And um, so we understood that it wasn't demons because in the in the circus we were always, if you felt pressure or negative or something, it was it was always, it's a demon. You're being attacked. Oh, you're preaching this week. You're going to get attacked. You know, all this stuff, which might, have, might be true, but it's it's not, you're not taking responsibility for yourself. You feel, now I, I understand that if you feel that, it's Yahushua not happy with you. And so I am... Um, don't feel like I have a lot of knowledge, um, still battling to get through the Torah and the scriptures, you know, for myself. I just, I mean, my whole life is just doing teach, teaching and producing teaching and everything like that, but to actually sit down quietly and read for myself, still battling to get there. But the relationship is very important to me because um, I know it's real. It's not about knowledge. Um, it used to be all about knowledge. And now it's like I speak to these people that just have all this incredible knowledge. And most of the time, and you probably notice, I just nod my head. And, yeah. Yeah, just really hoping they don't ask me, you know, do you know what I'm talking about? Or, you know, it's half the things I don't know what they're talking about. Lou's pretty cool because he's just in the scripture. But some other, sometimes you'll speak to Messianic people and they just, then they start bringing the Talmud in and they, all these other things in. And it's like, I, I never... Because I was brought up a Christian in a Christian school, and so you're just totally into the scripture. I've heard it all, and you know. So when someone starts talking about things that aren't in scripture, you start going, "That's that's a bit I haven't heard that before. What's that about?" Um, unless it's like a pagan understanding or a stronghold that Lou often brings in. Like, uh, did you know this actually came from here? That's different. I didn't know that. But when they start teaching things that aren't in the Torah. Yeah. And so that's how you changed and became into the into well, the truth. Well, you know myself. I've always been trying to be. Did I say you know myself? <laughs> <laughs> you know yourself. It's totally into me. You know myself. I do know yourself. <laughs> You know yourself. I was always trying to 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 work on things and rock, be a rock star, and how did that go? For I think, <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. When I first met you, wasn't it? I handed you a couple of my CDs and said, "This is me." Mm. You know, it's like, oh, what the hell was that? Trying to impress people. Um, <laughs> so, consequently, when we got married, you know, as you know, I was upstairs, you know, learning computer stuff and trying to produce our wedding video and you know I didn't know a thing about computers and it wouldn't it wouldn't work and 
this computer would keep shutting down and um, years later the computers were still shutting down and I didn't have a clue. Up in Queensland I think I threw a computer out the door. Mm. At yeah. the window. Like at the window, window, yeah. Mm. Just really, <laughs> I was really angry. Um, and um, An yeah. open window, just to clarify that. There was no glass. <laughs> the window was big I think it was open. a sliding window door. <laughs> No, no, it was, it was your old front. singing room. No, it was out the front because I came home and said, why is there a computer on the front grass? <laughs> yeah, and I was in a rage. That, I think that was one of the times you went down to Sydney mm. and said, I'm leaving you. Yeah. Mm. So it was, yeah, I was always trying to do this computer thing. And, uh, and then it got to a point where I was so angry and so it just angry and perverse and enraged and everything inside myself that we just decided there's no more computer in our life. Um, and within a couple of years we had a computer. Yeah. In the house, in the living room, in the salon, but not for dinner. Mm. Although I could be wrong, we might have actually gone without a computer altogether. Mm, we didn't have Shock any, horror, imagine doing that now. We cut off from the internet. <gasps> we no email, no Facebook. <laughs> we cut off from the internet and everything. Mm. Um, no, and you did coding, huh? And so I started stepping into the computer work again very slowly, dipping my toe in, just sort of testing the waters uh, and recording music. That was the main thing I was into, recording music. Uh, I don't know why, just it always gave me joy. I, I, I regret never actually learning an instrument professionally, like classically or theoretically. I just sort of strum along. But as far as the music goes, it's just about chucking pretty sounds together and if I like it, I keep it sort of like throwing things up in the air and seeing where they land. But uh, um, that's what I was into. So, um, And then I'd written a few, because we were still having meetings. We still thought you had to come together all the time and have these weekly meetings. And even though we were now in that's room, uh, so we were so sick of the Christian songs that I thought I'm just going to write a handful of simple ditties myself. And that the first song I wrote was I Believe. Mm. Yerushalayim, just one verse, one chorus, mm -hmm. and those were our first two songs, and uh, I'm grafted in, abide in me, that one was just, yeah, that's been, our theme song, our theme song, that's been sitting on the shelf for years, we've never used it, um, so, and uh, so I recorded this music, and then a couple of years after that, Chris said, uh, Chris started uh, he sent an email to Lou and said, uh, I've got a young man who's pretty cool bloke. He wants to uh, show you some of his music. So Lou contacted me and said, blah, 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 I've heard you write some music. I'd love to hear it. So I sent him some music. And uh, I started there. So I freaked, freaked out, nervous. I'd never shown my music to anybody. Uh, and Lou said, do you want to help me with some seminars or design some PowerPoints and things like that? And so I started designing the some of the PowerPoints for his seminar and didn't know anything about video work still at that point. Uh, it's always just been learning, learning by practicing. Uh, then I just worked out I could turn a PowerPoint into a video. And, and then, but there was no voice. So then I'd have to start recording the voice and my voice was really boring and monotone and, and you know. So I did all these, what was on YouTube, all these seminars, all these documentaries but not really that were just lose notes with my voice and it wasn't until years later again that Christopher from the radio station said we want to do a show with you Lou on the radio station and so Lou said well I'm going to send these emails to Mark because I wouldn't have a clue how to do that so he'll produce me so I just thought I was going to be um, recording it or helping him doing whatever and he said no we're doing a show together and I just fell over backwards because in my Christian mindset, which I still had, you if somebody's written a book, they're a big deal. You know, they're a superstar if you've written a book. Uh, uh, and you know, I don't just mean if someone writes a book and there's a book. If you've got a book that's going around the world, <laughs> thousands of copies, or the same, with, same if you put a CD out and it's around the world, it's like, oh, that's a rock star. So to have this man say to me, oh, I want you to work with me, I was just like, wow, like I don't feel, you know, I'm just an idiot. I can't keep together, I've got anger problems, and I've got all these kids and I can't handle them half the time and you want me to get on there and, and, and pretend like I've got it together and that I'm spiritual. Um, and 
But through that, I've grown a lot. I've grown, seen so much that it's not what I thought it was. It's not about having it all together. It's not about all the knowledge. It's just about love. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> I don't know what my question was, but that's okay. It sounds great. Yeah. I don't know. How has coming into this experience and learning, having this information, learning all this stuff, affected your relationships with the people around you, such as your friends and your family? Well, down here, couldn't say I actually have any friends, but family. It's okay. <laughs> Andy's my friend. Andy the Apple. Andy's my computer. Um, it's... um. My family, you know, never agreed with us. They've, you know, we've had brothers and sisters cut us off, and the same old thing most of you have had when you come into Yusha with a violent reaction. So, I still at times come across a bit desperate. I guess I'd say, Mum and Dad, have you seen this? You know, and they, oh yeah, I oh, know, you know, they just look like. So, it's um, still that little kid trying to get attention, which is just pathetic. Um, get over it. How do you feel your um, yeah, it's hideous. You, um, because you see the people that they mix with and how they treat each other, and you just think. And also because when we went up to Queensland, I was always it was always like I'd broken up the family, you know. Even though they were with us when we found out the true name, and they walked away. Um, they, um, my father's very angry at Chris and Victoria. And, he was old, same age as him, and so I was looking for him like a father instead of my dad, and so there was a little lot of jealousy and anger there. And so that's never really healed. Um, we have a better relationship now because I'm back down here with them. And, uh, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a horrible relationship. As you can tell, the way they feel and the way they, you know, we hardly ever see them. And, And, but I understand, I know, see, I know, you know, it's not a big sob story, I know the truth. It's not me they're angry at. It's the, it's the spirit within them and the spirit within me. So they're angry at Yahusha. So, you know, I don't have to feel like I feel half the time. So, but, um, I've used a lot of the computer work to um, buffer what I'm actually going through. I just it takes so much concentration to do what I do I I've enjoyed that people will do things to me or say things to me or the family will be over and they'll have a go at me or whatever and the minute they go I'm back on the computer and I'm just blown you know so I just so if I if I had to sit by myself in a room and dwell on it all for a while <laughs> I'd probably be a mess because I don't sort of think about it I just get on with the next project um, that's how I've sort of to just keep going you know, stuff all that that's all madness to me all the games they play and all the communications and all the you know it's all madness and just get on with the next project so in that that that's Yahushua I believe sort of he's given me something to sort of hold on to like there's always another project um, and some you know it's not just project for the sake of a project it used to be but now it's like projects are sort of, some of them are laborious, you know, some of them I don't enjoy, um, you know, a lot of long hours of video editing, nobody enjoys that, you do it because you can see you know, who's just doing something and you want to share it, um, you know, it's easy to sit there and go, oh, who the hell watches this, you know, what are you doing all this for, why don't you just cut off and run away with your family and not have anything to do with anybody. Which is, you could easily do when you look at the Nazarene and the Messianic community. You'd be just like, oh, get the hell out of here. The hell out of Dodge is insane. Look at the way they behave. But you've got to hold on to what Yahushua's given you. Everybody's got a gift, and if you run away from it, you just feel like death. A few times when we've had a week off or gone on a holiday, I start, after a few days, I start feeling, starting to feel a bit guilty, like you're sitting on a beach somewhere, and it's like, oh, I should be doing work for Yahushua. Like, a lot of that's just my own mind because you're allowed to have a break here and there. But it's, um, I just want to keep doing it. And if any of this is useful, it's all crap. You know? so. Thank you. Thank you.
it is not for them. Uh, and what happened to your beard? Leave my beard alone. I got bored with the beard. <laughs> what is it all our viewers would like to know? I got bored with it. Okay. Um, so what about your five children? Tell us a bit about being a father. Um, How has that impacted your life? I, I could sum it up. In one word, actually, um, my I heard someone say it a year or two ago how what parenting is to them, <clears throat> and I thought that's so true. Guilt, <laughs> parent by guilt, because I don't feel like I'm a very good father or a very good you know, husband or a very good you know personality or a very you know I do most of it by guilt. I feel guilty, and there's a scripture that says. Blessed is the man that doesn't feel guilty about what he says or does. So it's not me. Um, partly the reason that I want to... There's also scriptures that say blessed is the man with many children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you're blessed in some way. I'm blessed, yeah, but I, 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 that's why I really want to put out this big body of work and then sort of step back and take my family on the road because they're growing older. And say to a lot of people I'm interviewing, look, let's pull back to a month monthly thing, or you know, because um, because I want I don't want it to be like it is now. Um, That's lovely. Yeah, and you've got fears just like I've got fears. How's he going to handle that with no computer? Well, <laughs> I'll have a computer, but uh, it's you know it won't be like it is now as intense um, it will be intense hopefully intense <laughs> <laughs> so hey it's like fill us in <laughs> fill us in <laughs> that's a good one fill us in fill us yeah so yeah no but the children are wonderful um yeah I love them. Can't handle them all the time, but I love them. Um, yeah. And if you could give some advice to young men out there who are the same age in life as you and coming into this experience, what would you say? Speak to them. Hmm. They want to hear from you. I would say to listen to the older people. Um, I, I I don't regret listening to the older people. Um, a lot of the time I didn't take the advice. But I, I my best mate was 30 years older than me. So it's um, and caused so much trouble. Everybody hated him and I. Um, but learn from the older people. In the life experience, I mean... Um, and, and don't, because people our age tend to look at them and go, oh, you got no idea, you don't know what I'm going through, you know, because they're living differently or they're coming to a different point in their life. Um, so I would say learn from the older people and don't look too much at other people. Um, and I would say if you are a married man, that give it up. Give what up? Huh? Give what up? Give it up yourself. Oh. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. You paused for too long. <laughs> give it up. Give up who you think you are. Um, give it all over to your wife. You know, I'm still learning how to do that, but, you know, I wish I could go back to when I was first married and do all that again because, you know, I treated you horribly. Um, I didn't know how to be married, didn't know anything. Didn't know how to love somebody. Um, I don't know in a package what I would say to young men. I've never actually been ever asked that. Um, I, would, I would just say get your relationship for yourself. Um, and I would say try and not look at, at what the world's mindsets are. A lot of young men want to go and search their own answers. 
older men have told them what, what it is. Older men have said what the Torah says, but they've wanted to go and find their own way. Um, why? You know? Just do what Torah says. If Torah doesn't address it, moderation. That's what I think. Um, we're coming into a time now where there's so much knowledge that the learning that if you eat this way, you know, it'll kill you. You know, if you do this or you do that, it'll kill you. It's not good for you. So, from somebody who's been addicted to, you know, food, and lack of sleep, and you know, entertainment, I understand all that. Um, it's, uh, I really don't know what I would say to young men. Find their relationship with Yahusha because he was my age. He was 33 years old when he died. And, you know, he's not some old man sitting up somewhere. He's a young man and he's inside me, he's in me. Um, he understands every single thing that I'm going through. Um, and I don't bring him into enough stuff. I try to do a lot of stuff on myself. And it never works. Um, find your relationship with Yerusha. If you're a Natsurim bloke, you're a young man, give up who you think you are for your wife and uh, love. That's the most important thing, love. Uh, so many people are going into knowledge and trying to study, 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 study. And great, study all you want, but it's about love. Um, I don't know half the things most of the other men I talk to know but I have Yahushua inside me and I know if I look the wrong way or think the wrong way or act the wrong way then I feel it um, and that's how I've known about the, the lusts of the flesh and sins of the flesh I, I haven't had to study it I haven't had to go to Torah and say does the Torah agree with this or does the Torah agree with that as far as my body's concerned and so I do something like that it's bang you, know, you, you feel I've been, I was at the school of hard knocks or something like that. So I, I, it's, that's real experience. That's what I would say to young men. Get a real experience. Don't go into the Messianic Judaism and all that. Don't go there. Go, go straight into Yahushua. Go into the Torah and into love. Loving one another and loving him. So I don't feel like that's a very good passage. <laughs> <laughs> that was great thank you very much for sharing with us tonight and giving to your story mm. I'm sure we can all agree that it's great to finally hear a little bit more from Mark mm -hmm. the beardless man yeah <laughs> mm. so thank you pleasure brothers and sisters good night everybody shalom Shalom, shalom.